guys, I hope your week is going well. In today's video, I wanted to talk about soy in moisturizers, creams, anti-wrinkle creams, in terms of its benefit for your skin as an anti-aging ingredient for improving wrinkles, fine lines, skin texture, and hyperpigmentation. I get questions to cover this ingredient from time to time, so that's what I'm gonna do. And at the end of this video, I will chit chat with you guys about some products from the Japanese brand Sana, all of which contain soy that I've used and really like. So I'll review those for you towards the end of the video. Soy is something that has many compounds that are of biologic importance to skin and skin health. It's very rich in phospholipids as well as essential fatty acids. But it also has two unique classes of compounds that really can uh, portend some benefit to your skin. Isoflavones, as well as something called protease inhibitors, which are a type of protein that inhibits enzymes that chew things up. Uh, isoflavones, we'll start with that. Soy is rich in two types of isoflavones that you may have heard of, genistein, and another one is called daydesign. Uh, these compounds function uh, to restore some of your skin's ability to handle damaging oxygen radicals. Free radicals that are generated in our skin from day-to-day -day environmental stressors like sun and smoking, pollution. Uh, we, we have our own system in place in our skin for coping with this, but it really gets exhausted very quickly. And we have good evidence to suggest and to show that topically applied soy can help in restoring a lot of those, those mechanisms, as well as decreasing the extent of damage that occurs when you are exposed to, to oxidative stressors. Soy, when applied topically, can function almost like an antioxidant in that it can increase something called glutathione S transferase in our skin, which is one of our, our body's, our skin's uh, compounds for dealing with oxidative damage. And it also can prevent some of the depletion of our skin's natural antioxidants. That's one of the issues with, with our skin antioxidant system is it gets taxed very easily and depleted. And topically applied soy has been shown to mitigate the degree of depletion of those of those antioxidant compounds. It also decreases the, there's also a decreased amount of damaging peroxide, uh, as well as a decreased amount of uh, kind of activation of a cascade that can result in DNA degradation. Soy also contains phytoestrogens, which are plant compounds that have estrogen-like activity or estrogen-like effects. They are weak, they, they, they are weak estrogens basically. These uh, compounds can bind to estrogen receptors in the body if taken systemically, but also, also we have estrogen receptors in our skin. And this is important because as part of formation of wrinkles and fine lines that occurs with aging, you know, a lot of that has to do with, in women, the fact that after, after women go through menopause, they have less estrogen and they then suffer things like depletion of collagen in their skin, uh, loss of hydration, and their overall dermis, the deeper layer of the skin, becomes thinner. And it has been shown that topical application of soy uh, through its phytoestrogen uh, effects, it's presumed, will, will slow that down and lessen that, that, pro, that, that effect of, of postmenopausal uh, lack of, of estrogens in the skin. You may be wondering, is it safe to use soy and personal care products? If it gets into the skin and it binds to estrogen receptors and has estrogen-like activity or weak estrogen-like activity, is that safe? And it seems to be very safe. The risk or the theoretical risk or the theoretical concern is that because phytoestrogens have weak estrogen-like activity, that if you have a current or past history or a family history of breast cancer or uterine cancer, it's probably prudent to avoid using products that contain soy in them applied topically to the skin. Talk to your doctor about this, but uh, you know, it's prudent to avoid them in personal care, pro avoid it in personal care products, creams, moisturizers. Uh, you know, it's not an essential, it's no harm, no foul to, to avoid it. Uh, if you want to obviously avoid that theoretical risk. 
The amount absorbed in the body is negligible. It does get into the skin and it does help in uh, things that uh, are due to estrogen depletion related to menopause in our skin, such as the thinning of the dermis, loss of collagen, loss of the supportive framework. Um, but we don't know that it necessarily contributes to risk of breast cancer or uterine cancer. These cancers are, are, are driven by and mediated through estrogen signaling. So we don't know that, but overall speaking generally, the epidemiologic data that we have actually suggests that soy is protective against breast cancer as well as other cancers. For example, in men, it's been shown to be associated with less risk of prostate cancer. And it also has been shown to be associated with better markers of cardiovascular health, better cholesterol, better blood pressure, lipid profiles, uh, overall heart, heart health. So consuming soy in the diet, the data that we have uh, suggests that it's, it seems to actually be healthy, but we do, there, there still are some gaps in knowledge. So uh, talk to your doctor about it, if it's right for you or not. But, uh, you know, and it's prudent to avoid it in, in moisturizers and things if you do have any kind of history of breast or endometrial cancer. That being said, I, you know, I don't, and so I don't have any concern using, using these ingredients myself. In addition to isoflavones, though, uh, there are also things called protease inhibitors within soy that can uh, impact uh, how our skin reacts to ultraviolet light. It can decrease uh, hyperpigmentation related to related to exposure to UV and we have good studies showing that topically applied soy uh, can improve the the appearance of model hyperpigmentation in photo damaged skin and it's thought to be that's thought to occur through enzymes called protease inhibitors that inhibit there's a specific enzyme in the skin that that contributes to hyperpigmentation called PAR uh, it is a protease, and so soy can inhibit that and, and thus have a brightening effect on the skin. Soy also can increase uh, hyaluronic acid in your skin and glycosaminoglycans. We have studies both in vitro, which means like cells in a dish, as well as studies in humans showing that topically applied soy in, um, can improve things related to photo damage. There's a study looking at uh, 65 women with moderate photo damage, looking at uh, soy, topical soy versus, versus just a plain moisturizer with no soy. And at the end of the 12 week study, the uh, soy containing moisturizer, people using it, they had improvement in texture, dullness, uh, an improvement in model hyperpigmentation, and an improvement in skin hydration and measures of, of moisture retention suggesting the benefit of soy uh, as an active ingredient in their moisturizer over just a plain non-soy containing moisturizer. So it has some wonderful benefits for your skin and it's an anti, you can think of it as an anti-aging ingredient. It can slow down some of the uh, thinning out of the skin that happens with age and loss of estrogen and it can improve the uh, amount of collagen in your skin, it can raise the amount of collagen in your skin, as well as increase the amount of hyaluronic acid that holds onto water in your skin, and it can also make your skin better able to cope with day-to-day -day environmental stressors like ultraviolet radiation and pollution. Now, some of my favorite soy products I have purchased uh, on Yes Style from the brand Sana. Sana is a Japanese brand. You can buy on Yes Style, or if you happen to have an H Mart or check any any other uh, like your local Asian grocer for it. They frequently carry it. I've seen it in, in my local H Mart. Uh, so Sana is a brand that has a lot of soy containing products, and I've tried several of them. So first up is the uh, Sana Soy Milk Six in One Moisture Cream. Uh, this is like 15 bucks on Yes Style. It has, uh, it's like an interesting jelly-like consistency. And I, I left a little bit behind here, but you can see I've pretty much used it all up. So I only left a little bit here so I could show you guys for this video the consistency.
So that one is a little bit kind of like a jelly humectant consistency. And you can use it by itself, but um, I find it works best underneath moisturizers. And so I was pairing it um, underneath the sauna soy milk cream, which has some similar ingredients, but is in a thicker vehicle. I'll show you this here. And I've used about half of it. It's just a nice thick white cream. It has the soy milk ferment, uh, as well as the soy protein in it. So personally, I thought that the two of these together worked really well uh, layered. And definitely, I definitely saw a brightening effect in my skin, just improvement in skin um, luminosity and uh, an improvement in kind of skin texture when I was using it on a consistent basis. So I might actually go back to those products. I really like them. Um, all right, then they also have a whitening cream that has not only just have soy, which I told you guys can be helpful for hyperpigmentation uh, through its protease inhibitor-like activity, but this product also has arbutin in it, which likewise is a skin brightening agent, and it has licorice root extract in it as well, which is not only a skin brightener, but is anti-inflammatory, helpful for redness. It also has polyglutamic acid in it, which is a nice moisturizing ingredient. And um, I really, I really like this, but I honestly didn't appreciate a substantial difference between this and the uh, sauna soy milk cream, uh, but I finished it up. <laughs> um, so in other words, I didn't see, I would expect with the whitening one to get a little bit more improvement in model hyperpigmentation over over the just the soy milk cream because you're getting the arbutin in there and the licorice root extract but i really didn't i really didn't notice a striking difference but they both were they both were great all these products are fragrance free by the way um so i really liked that one and found that you know it was effective and i used it up they're very small containers but i will say that the um the both the both the creams uh they you only need a little bit they're pretty they're pretty rich um, and a little bit, you know, you can get a nice layer all over the face. So it takes a while to use them up. Uh, the six in one gel, uh, the six in one cream is more of a gel consistency and you know, you don't need a whole lot of that and it's good underneath products. The last product that I really like a lot and I'm currently uh, trying to make my way through, I don't use it on a consistent basis, but I've used it enough to, to review it for you guys. It is the Sauna Soy Milk Wrinkle Cream. Of all the creams, I would say this is the one you should go for because it's got the soy in it, obviously, like all of these products do, but also has ceramides in it, which can be helpful for restoring the skin barrier. And it has licorice root in it, which is anti-inflammatory, likewise good for hyperpigmentation. But the other thing about this, it contains retinol in it, uh, which is a vitamin A derivative that you can find in a lot of cosmeceutical wrinkle creams and products. And uh, it, it can be beneficial. There's a lot of science behind retinols and I've talked about them in other videos, so I won't go into too much detail, but you know from those videos that retinol and cosmeceuticals like this is a little less is less reliable than prescription tretinoin prescription tazeratine or over-the-counter adapalene brand name different it's just not as bioactive as those um, vitamin a derivatives are but there's definitely data showing that it's helpful and it can help with things like wrinkles and fine lines so it's you know a logical ingredient in a wrinkle cream so the anti-wrinkle cream is a lot richer and um, it's just a really nice nighttime moisturizer. It is a nice substitute or alternative to the CeraVe Skin Renewing Night Serum, I think it's called. The CeraVe Purple Label product that has retinol in it. This is a nice alternative to it. Uh, it's got retinol like that, it has ceramides like that, but this also brings in brings in the soy and I think, you know, the sauna brand, they really, soy is their strong point and topical soy. I really, you know, this brand, my understanding in Japan is pretty affordable. It's like a, it's like a drugstore product that's inexpensive and I think it's totally worth it. So those of you who live in Japan who watch me or, you know, travel there, comment below, but I have really enjoyed sauna products. You all know I've talked about their uh, sheet masks, even though I'm not a big advocate of doing sheet masks, I think it's kind of a waste of time. The sauna uh, sheet masks are really nice. Um, and you know, I recommend them if you're looking for a sheet mask for fun. Uh, I don't have any fragrance in them. And you know, like all the products they have, the fermented soy. I really do see an improvement in the luminosity, the brightness of my skin. 
an improvement of hy hyperpigmentation, kind of skin modeling, discoloration, yellowing, as well as skin texture using these sauna moisturizers. And you know, they're effective and I recommend them. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys talking about soy, what it can do for the skin. Um, you know, no, it's not harmful to be putting it on your skin. It's not absorbed in any appreciable level into the body. Uh, but you know, exercise prudence if you do have a, a current or past history of breast and or endometrial cancer, you know, and always discuss with your treating healthcare provider. But for me, it's an ingredient that I really like. It's a logical anti-aging ingredient with some good science behind it. And so hopefully this helped to explain that to you all. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.